Up next, we have Jamie Robertson. He's a cartographer with the Adventure Cycling Association, and he works on maps for the association's 47,000 bicycle network, 47,000 mile bicycle network on the weekdays, and then rides it whenever he can. So, it's all you. All right. Thank you. Um, did we make it? There we go. All right. <laughs> my name is Jamie Robertson. I work for the Adventure Cycling Association. And I brought my gear with me today, because mostly because I can't deal with a trackpad. But um, we're going to be talking about um, Illustrator scripts and shortcuts. And I just broke it. Um, and if you don't use Illustrator, don't leave yet because some of the stuff is applicable to any application, so stay tuned. Um, if you want to follow along and stuff, uh, there's a URL there at the bottom and it's also on the other slides to keep track of the stuff that I'm going to be showing. Alright, so why would you want to go through this process of making extra uh, shortcuts and keyboard stuff when it, in Illustrator when you already have a lot of capability there. Well, for us at the Adventure Cycling Association, we do it because we have a 47,000 mile network. We have 107 printed maps with roughly 15 panel maps per map, which is about 1,600 Illustrator documents. So as you might imagine, we do lots of things the same way a lot of times. Um, so efficiency is key. So that's kind of where we're at there. Um, just a little bit about our maps. Um, these are kind of what they look like. We have them all laid out so they, f they fold and fit in a handlebar bag as you're cycling and have all kinds of information about elevation and turns and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what, we're, what, what I work on. Um, so Illustrator has a lot of built-in functionality for this. Um, you can set up some Illustrator shortcuts and you can even set up actions, um, but it's somewhat limited because you can only wire actions up to F keys and it's, it's, I've just had a lot of problems with it kind of crashing things. So how do we get around that? How do we um, really customize it? And the solution I've come up with is a third-party app, um, which isn't ideal, but it gets the job done in this um, situation for both platforms. Um, I've got a solution for Windows and Mac, so that's what we're going to talk about real quick. Um, for the Mac side, there's this cool little app called Spark. And what it does is it essentially loads the menu structure of any application into Spark, um, Illustrator in this case, and then you can build shortcuts based on any menu item, even if it doesn't have a predetermined shortcut. Um, it's a little bit finicky, but it's free and it's awesome. Um, the one for Windows is called Auto AutoHotKey. Um, it is extremely flexible. You can bind a key or action to pretty much anything. Um, it takes a little bit more of a learning curve to get into. It doesn't have a GUI, so you have to kind of figure out this syntax and write this um, little script. Um, but I've already done that for this set of scripts, so you don't, wouldn't have to do that. Um, there's a huge user community, and it's free and open source, so it's a pretty, pretty cool project. All right, um, so I'm not going to pain you all to how to install this, um, because that's really boring. But I have a GitHub page that's on that URL that has the instructions for how to install this and the repo with all, this, all these goodies. Um, so check that out. And if you have any questions, let me know. But it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the other thing I have is uh, cheat sheet and shortcut files in this repo that have, this for Mac and Windows, these handy dandy little printouts that fit on your monitor so you know what their keyboard shortcuts are. And then as I mentioned, the um, the libraries of these shortcuts for both Mac and Windows in that repo. Um, the keys that I have set up for this are kind of clunky, but they don't conflict with other stuff. So they, once you get used to them, they work pretty well. For the Mac, it's Shift Control Command, and Windows, it's Shift Control. And the last thing is that um, some of the shortcuts are just normal window menu actions, but some are custom scripts, and I am unfortunately not a brilliant JavaScript uh, writer, coder. coder. Um, Nathaniel has one script that we use that he wrote a long time ago that's super awesome. And then 
Um, a guy named Hiroku has even customized some of his for my needs. He lives in Japan, and that's him at the bottom there too. So um, super thankful for the awesome community out there. All right, demo time. Um, so I am in Illustrator CS6, but I've tested this with Illustrator CS6 and CC 2017 on Mac and CC 2017 on Windows. Um, so this is, these are sort of the core scripts that I've used, um, and I'm going to go through kind of why I use these. Um, so one of them is select clipping masks. So often from SVG, you get an SVG from QGIS or an Illustrator document from ArcMap, and it comes with all these clipping masks, and sometimes they're nice, but sometimes they're a total pain. So keyboard shortcut M selects all your masks, and you can quickly delete them. Um, I need to get to my move tool. Um, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> um, one of the things that I've really learned to use is in Illustrator is um, locking layers and stuff and select using the inverse as opposed to selecting lots of different objects. So one of the things that's always been a pain is going select inverse. There's, no th there's nothing there. Why is there nothing there? Um, <laughs> So you can select an object and then I for inverse. Um, these are pretty self-explanatory, but F for fill, S for stroke, K for graphic style, A for appearance, and H for symbol. So those are um, pretty self-explanatory, but they are super helpful not to have to go to that menu every time you want to do that. Um, this next one is a custom script that selects text by size. Sometimes you have labels that you've tweaked a little bit to see how they work, or if you use an extension called Map Publisher, you can have it automated um, font decreases. And then you have a, one layer, but lots of different uh, text sizes in that layer, and sometimes you want to just tweak some of them. So this one is T, and you can set a range, and then you can select all the text between 9 and 10 points. So you can select some text ba or based on a range. Um, this next one is Nathaniel's script, and we use it heavily with our map publisher field, um, our shield placements. Um, the shields come in with, as a text object, a glyph, and you can select them, but they're kind of hard to deal with, and what this script does is it, you can select some objects and then select another object, and then it replaces those old objects with the new one. So in conjunction with select same fill color, we can select same fill, Click that and R for replace, so you can replace text glyphs with your own Illustrator symbols. And that works across hundreds and hundreds of um, objects. So what we do is we wire them up to different admin classes. So you have county roads and then state, you put them with a different, um, a different fill color, so select same fill, replace, select same fill, and replace, and then you got your symbols, replace those things. Um, if you want to deep dive into that whole thing, I've set up a URL with a blog post about all that, karen.pw slash lblpro, um, if you really want to get into the weeds on that. Um, these next two are just basically inconsistencies between other Adobe apps. Why does E not export an Illustrator? I don't know, but now it does. Um, and why does D not place like InDesign? I don't know, but now it does. And that makes me happy. Um, this next one is... Uh, zoom and center selection, and sometimes you'll break objects apart, and you can't find this tiny little object without a stroke, even if it's selected and it's driving you crazy. So you could even click it in the layer list and then run this script, which is zoom and center selection, and it will zoom and center right to that object so you can deal with it. Um, that comes in handy a lot if you want to methodically step through some objects and do something to them as well. Um, next is... Uh, these are self-explanatory, save all open docs, save and close all open docs. Um, this next one is art correction, so either paths or text paths. You can run six and it will take those paths and then th really, really fix them, but put it on two nice, even beziers. And sometimes if you have a creek label that's been auto-placed or something and you just don't want to deal with those nodes, this will just throw it across and then you can move it really nicely. Um, this one is similar to that, but it flips the direction. So you can flip the direction of a bezier. And um, that's really handy for if you have a label that's on one piece of a river 
and then you want to put it on another piece of the river, but it needs to be on the other side, so it just pushes it to the other side and makes it, makes it nice. Um, this next one is stroke configuration. So Adobe, by default, ratchets up the stroke as in one-point increments, and that's almost invariably too much. So these, now you can use plus and minus to change it with 0.1. So you can step up those strokes by 0.1 point every, every time you press the keys, which is nice. Um, this next one is just path simplify, which is nothing more than a shortcut to select or object path simplify, but how many times have we all done that and don't want to do that menu command again? Um, this next one is reverse path direction. You can select one path or multiple paths and W will flip that direction. So if you need to put text on that path and it's going the wrong way, you can flip that path around um, so that your text goes the right way. Um, close path, well you can select an object and hit C and close that path. Um, this is common with administrative boundaries. Let's say you're, you're down in the weeds on this path with an inner stroke and it's a compound path and all of a sudden you break it and you go, I don't even know where that's broken anymore and I don't want it to be broken. You can select it, the whole compound path, and run C and it will close that path and fix that inner stroke again. So that's super nice too. Um, this one is a really great script that we use if we put really detailed road data with switchbacks and stuff into a small scale map and we're kind of using that scale of data where at a scale that's too small and you can simplify it, but simplifying it just makes it all weird and you just kind of want to keep the same shape, but you just don't want these kind of jaggedy nodes. Um, you can run V and it will round that stroke out. It will just basically turn the bezier of each node and round it out so you can just have that same stroke, but it'll be nice and smooth. Um, this is good for elevation profiles too that come in really jagged. Um, you can just you can kind of just even, even those strokes out and curve them over. Um, o is set up for offset path, which is just a menu command, but let's say you want to make, let's say you want to make water lines and you don't want to do that menu every time, you can, ooh, that didn't look good. Um, anyway, it, you can just quickly go through that menu. Um, X is cut, so you can select multiple nodes and hit X and move that like that and then X, can, you can split that path at all the nodes along that line, and sometimes that's really handy as well. Um, this next three scripts are kind of all in one, but one thing that bugs me about Illustrator is that if you select something, if you, if you change the text orientation, it actually moves the text, which is super annoying, um, especially if you're trying to put it onto a point. So these scripts let you change the orientation of the text with center and stuff with that. <laughs> Not my script, but that's super handy. Um, and the last one is batch edit text. And this is kind of handy if you have a really big map that's lagging Illustrator, especially when you're going into text edit mode on objects, it's really clunky. Um, what this does is lets you select a group of text objects even with other non-text objects. And it um, pulls up just a text edit box so you can just then quickly edit those values. And then hit it and then just go right back to it. So that's um, just quickly goes through that without having to kind of pull in and out of those objects and just save time as you move along. Um, that's it. Any questions?